Imagine this. You're flying across the ocean, your phone tracking your position midair, and everything runs smoothly until suddenly satellite signals vanish. No maps, no positioning, no digital time sync. Planes, banks, tractors, delivery trucks, all thrown into chaos. This isn't a sci-fi plot. It's the quiet, invisible risk we live with every day. At the heart of this system is GPS, the global positioning system built by the U.S. military and open to the world. But what many don't realize is that GPS isn't the only system in play anymore. A rising giant has entered the arena. They do. China's answer to America's decades-long dominance in satellite navigation. And its growth? Fast. Strategic. Global. In today's video, we break down how GPS and Beidou stack up. Technologically, strategically, and politically. Who's really leading the global race? And what does that mean for your daily life? If this sounds fascinating already, give this video a like and share it with a friend. Let's bring more people into this conversation about digital power and sovereignty. CTA Nurbur 1 When GPS was launched in the 1970s, it had one job. Help the U.S. military guide missiles, track troops, and operate in total precision. But by the 1990s, GPS was unlocked for civilian use. And today, it's absolutely everywhere. We rely on satellite navigation to fly aircraft safely across countries and oceans, synchronize global financial systems down to the millisecond, manage global logistics from Amazon deliveries to container ships, farm with precision using drones and tractors that rely on location data, power telecom networks and emergency services, a 2019 study estimated that just one day without GPS would cost the U.S. economy over $1 billion. And some sectors, like banking or aviation, could experience catastrophic failures within hours. GPS is made up of a constellation of around 31 satellites, orbiting 12th 50 miles above the Earth. Each satellite continuously broadcasts a signal with ultra-precise timing. A GPS receiver, like your phone, listens to at least four of these satellites, measures how long their signals take to arrive, and triangulates your location within meters. The system is owned by the U.S. Department of Defense, operated by the U.S. Space Force, and constantly monitored by ground stations. For decades, GPS has been the global standard. But here's the twist. It's getting old. GPS is going through a long-needed upgrade, but the process is slow. Of the 31 active satellites, only six are part of the new GPS-3 generation, launched since 2018. These offer stronger anti-jamming signals for military and civilian users, improved accuracy, signals compatible with other systems like Europe's Galileo. Even more advanced satellites, called gps 3 f are in the pipeline, with launches starting in 2027 and rolling out into the 2030s. But that's a long wait. Meanwhile, the system's ground control software, called OCX, has faced years of delay. Until that's fully operational, the most advanced satellites can't be used to their fullest potential. So GPS, while still dominant, is at a technological crossroads. Enter Beidou, China's digital compass. In the 1990s, during a standoff in the Taiwan Strait, China realized a troubling vulnerability. It relied on American GPS to track its own missiles and the U.S. could turn it off. That moment sparked a national mission to build a navigation system entirely independent of the West. That system became Beidou, named after the Big Dipper constellation. The first version, launched in 2000, served only China. But by 2020, Beidou had gone global. Today, Beidou includes about 45 active satellites, offering global coverage and regional enhancements across Asia-Pacific, Africa, and parts of Latin America. It's no longer a domestic tool, it's a key piece of China's global digital strategy. What makes Beidou different? Yes, Beidou provides standard navigation and timing services, just like GPS. But it also offers two-way satellite messaging. You can send short text messages through Beidou, even in areas with no cellular coverage. High precision tracking. Beidou's positioning is especially accurate in Asia, down to 2.5 meters for public use and as precise as centimeters for professional or military users. Faster adoption in the developing world. Thanks to Chinese infrastructure projects, Beidou coverage is often more reliable in parts of Africa, 
Southeast Asia, and Central Asia than GPS. But with these advantages come concerns. Beidou's messaging feature is marketed as a lifeline in remote areas, but it also opens the door for surveillance. China controls the infrastructure, encryption, and chips that run the service. For countries integrating Beidou into national services, like transportation, logistics, or agriculture, that could mean giving Beijing access to sensitive location data. On the flip side, GPS isn't invincible either. It's vulnerable to jamming and spoofing, which can trick receivers into thinking they're somewhere else, a nightmare for military or financial systems. There have been reports of spoofing attacks in war zones and near ports. This creates a global tension. Countries want reliable satellite services, but they also want control over who runs them. What do you think? Would you feel comfortable knowing your country's navigation systems depend on another nation's satellites? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to hear where you stand. CTA Napra 2. This battle isn't just about maps or timing. It's about who owns the backbone of the digital world. China has cleverly woven Beidou into its Belt and Road Initiative, exporting not just roads and ports, but satellites, base stations, and communication standards. Countries that adopt Beidou often also get Chinese telecom networks, 5G systems, and cloud data services, creating a full-stack dependency on Beijing's tech ecosystem. In contrast, the West continues to invest in GPS, Galileo, EU, and allied collaboration. But the pace and direction differ. For many developing countries, Beidou's offer is hard to resist. More features, better coverage, lower cost, sometimes even free infrastructure. But at what long-term cost? GPS is modernizing, but it won't be fully upgraded until the mid-2030s. Beidou is expanding, with China planning additional enhancements and tighter integration into commercial devices. Think smart cars, wearables, and autonomous shipping. Other systems, like Russia's GLONASS and Europe's Galileo, continue to grow as well, making the satellite navigation world increasingly multipolar. Most smartphones today access multiple systems at once, using GPS, Beidou, and Galileo in the background for the best accuracy. But who controls the satellites still matters deeply for defense, economics, and sovereignty. GPS got us here, but Beidou is changing where we're going. The era of a single navigation system is over. Now it's a high-tech arms race, a battle of satellites, signals, software, and soft power. And as users, citizens, and voters, we have to ask, who do we trust to guide us? Thank you for staying with us through this global journey. If you found this valuable, please give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss our future deep dives into how technology is rewriting the rules of global power. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. CTA number three.